Elon Musk reacted to a post on X in a big way about the illegal immigration crisis in New York. It was a video posted by a woman addressing how things were out of control in her NYC community. And then there's no law against illegal mi migrants committing crimes. So again, it's lawlessness, non-payment of taxes, siphoning all our money to their native countries. And it's just killing our economy. It's getting scary. Right now, you know, people in the Bronx are getting attacked. People Upper East Side, two of them just got attacked. And it's illegal to buy mace. It's illegal to protect yourself. I've, I've, been, I've lived here 50 years. And this is not fair that we have, we feel unsafe in our homeland. And our own country is not defending us. Elon Musk reposted the video stating, quote, there is either a red wave this November or America is doomed. Imagine four more years of this getting worse. Now, Elon Musk has had enough, but will Americans show they've had enough too come elections in November? Vice President Kamala Harris held a marijuana reform roundtable at the White House Friday. In attendance were rapper Fat Joe, Kentucky Democrat Governor Andy Beshear, and individuals pardoned for marijuana convictions. I've said many times, I believe, I think we all at this table believe, nobody should have to go to jail for smoking weed. And what we need to do is recognize that far too many people have been sent to jail for simple marijuana possession. Harris also highlighted the administration's program to give small business administration loans available to the previously incarcerated individuals. Uh, tens of thousands have had their sentences reduced, according to Harris, at the request of President Joe Biden. The White House is urging the Department of Health and Human Services and the Department of Justice to reclassify the drugs so that future arrests are prevented. Tim? Right now, let's talk with the president of wallbuilders.com and co-author of the American Story, Victory News contributor Tim Barton. Welcome back to Victory. Victory News, sir. Thanks, Greg. Good to be with you. Well, here we go. Trump endorsed Ohio Senate candidate Bernie Marino is in a three-way race against old guard Republicans for the GOP nomination. Marino faces Matt Dolan. He's a wealthy state senator, Ohio Secretary of State Frank LaRose, who endorses Trump but does not want to be seen as a, quote, cheap knockoff of the former president. Is the AP smear against Moreno enough to affect the outcome between the three candidates? You know, I don't know the AP has the influence that they think they have. What we see is that most Americans are waking up to the reality uh, that that media is very dishonest. Uh, and apart from places like a Victory News, there's not many places you can go and expect that you're getting an accurate representation with whatever information they're presenting. I think the American people have become uh, much less trusting of the established media, of course, the AP being that. And I, I think most people that pay attention know that the AP – is incredibly left-leaning, and therefore it might have the opposite effect of people going, if you say it, then we're not going to believe it because you said it. So I don't think it will have the impact they think it will have. You know, this, this race is still undetermined, but I don't think the AP is quite the player that they think they are in this scenario. Okay, Tim, Democrats and liberal pundits, to your point, were all over Sunday political shows criticizing Donald Trump, are you ready for this, for threatening political violence if he does not win in November. Here's Trump warning China's President Xi Jinping about his plan to ship cars from Mexico into the U.S. market. Here's the clip. We're going to put a 100 percent tariff on every single car that comes across the line, and you're not going to be able to sell those cars if I get elected. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. So he's referring to cars being sent by China. So how did Nancy Pelosi and many others get political violence from that warning to protect America's automotive industry? Yeah, it, it, it's utterly ridiculous when you use an expression of speech that is something to indicate it's a disastrous reality. That's what he's saying. It's going to be disastrous if I don't get elected. And, and by the way, I would agree with him. It, it would be disastrous, and it would be far more disastrous than just the automobile industry. So I, I think it's not crazy to extrapolate that maybe he was communicating something that goes beyond just the automobile industry. However, He's not saying what they suggested he said, that for for some way out far reason, this is calling for violence and bloodshed. He's indicating how terrible it would be for the Biden administration to win, and he's not wrong. 
Okay, let's stay with media for just a second. Newly released Media Research Center study has revealed Google interfered with the major elections in the United States mm -hmm. 41 times over the last 16 years, Tim. In every case, in every case, Google harmed the candidates, regardless of party, who threatened its left-wing candidate of choice. Your reaction to this investigation? It, this is not surprising. This is affirmation of things that, that for those of us who've been paying attention, we, we've known and actually been saying for years. And it's interesting, they, they have identified the last 16 years has been going on. If you would have said this 16 years ago, people would have thought you're a crazy conspiracy theorist. Although over maybe the last four, five, six, seven, eight years, people wouldn't think you're quite as crazy. But but this is an affirmation of something that we've largely suspected, something that, that we have known that there have been players like a Facebook, like a Google, who have been doing things to promote their candidates, doing things to damage the campaigns of candidates that do not support some of their positions. So this is not surprising. It's affirmation of what we know. And it's a reason that people have to be careful when we're looking at elections, make sure they're informed and make sure they're not just doing basic Google searches or social media right. to gather their information on candidates. Now more than ever, this, this go around, we gotta be very careful with social media and where we get our information from. Tim Barton, thank you so much. Back to you in just a moment.